Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I'm good, Brian. I don't know. I was thinking about the show that we uh, are, are going to do right now, and I don't know if we've done this particular uh, theme after all of these years. After all these years. We're, we're old men doing this Horse Center show. It's been around for a long time, but we still have fun. And we still have important things to say here on Horse Center, Matt. Hey, there's a lot of negativity in, in, in racing at times. And, and certainly of late, there's a, a lot of horses being retired early, short careers to the breeding shed, flight line, epicenter among, among the most notable maybe. But uh, there's also a lot of good horses returning. And, and Matt and I wanted to put a positive spin. It's a slow week of racing. So we're going to put a positive spin on what we have to look forward to in 2023. And these are, you know, we, we don't have every good horse coming back, obviously. But this is a list of 20 horses that Matt and I feel strongly about that we want to see running in 2023. And uh, we feel very, uh, it, it's likely that these 20 horses will all run in 2023. So that's good news, Matt. We're going to start at the top. You want to see horses that are coming back next year. How about horses that are Breeders' Cup winners, Matt? We'll start with Cody's Wish, uh, fresh off a victory in the Vox Populi voting. He's he's the people's horse. Great story. Really good horse, Matt. He's, uh, he's a whisker or, or a neck, I guess, away from winning eight races in a row. Yeah, yeah, and I think that is particularly impressive. Bill Mott has worked wonders with this uh, with this son of Co of Curlin that, as you mentioned, is a Breeders' Cup winner of of the Dirt Mile, and before that, won the Forgo uh, at uh, uh, at Saratoga um, four in a row, and like you said, uh, could have been could have been eight in, eight in a row. Yeah, a narrow defeat at uh, Tampa Bay Downs, and uh, Cody's wish would be riding an eight-race winning streak. He's coming back next year. So many good Curlins out there, so many good Curlins on this list. In fact, Bill Mott, one of the top trainers. Interesting to me about Cody's wish, Matt, is he's never won beyond a mile, but with that breeding, there's every reason in the world to believe Cody's wish could become a horse who can stretch it out next year. We'll see what Bill Mott has in mind. For Cody's wish, I could see that uh, at least trying longer races next year. A lot of similarities. The next horse on our list, Goodnight Olive, just like Cody's wish, she uh, broke through with her first grade one win at Saratoga. She did it in the ballerina, Matt, and she followed that up with an impressive win in the Breeders' Cup. Yes, and another similarity with uh, Cody's wish is uh, is a pretty sizable winning streak. Uh, Chad Brown, uh, uh, you know has done great things with Goodnight Olive. Uh, seven career starts, six wins, one second. So uh, one race away from being undefeated. Um, currently four-year-old and the winner of the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint. Yeah, she won the Philly and Mare Sprint impressively as she did the ballerina, as she's done most of her races, Matt. Uh, I'll give you another thing in common with Cody's Wish. I could see her running a little farther. Now, she's been a little bit more of a sprinter than Cody's Wish, but uh, certainly bred uh, to go a little longer. So we'll see. Good night, Olive. Uh, good news that she's coming back. Six race winning streak. She was second in her debut. That's it. Other than that, it's a perfect record. Another horse, another horse with only one uh, career loss on the list, Matt. That's Forte. Forte was a disappointment in the Sanford after a big maiden win at Belmont. He went to Saratoga, got beat in the Sanford. He ran fourth, in fact. Since then, though, grade one, grade one, grade one. Yeah, uh, Pletcher uh, went right from that certainly disappointing performance uh, at Saratoga with Forte um, and, and uh, has won all the rest of his races, the Breeders' Cup. Juvenile uh, 
most recently, the Breeders' Futurity, both of those grade ones were at Keeneland. Putcher seemed to be, you know, on a mission with this horse, knowing exactly what he wanted to do, uh, skipping a race in New York and, and going to Keeneland to, to get a race over the track. I don't know if he thought he was going to win that race because it was a tough field, but he did and, and went right on to the juvenile, the current leader on the Kentucky Derby points leaderboard with 40 and the individual betting interest favorite at two to one in the most recent Kentucky Derby future wager pool two. Yeah, I, I don't know if this two-year-old champion is getting quite as much talk as uh, as maybe he deserves. He certainly proved every bit of being a champion this year, especially with that Breeders' Cup win over the heavily favored Cave Rock. Forte uh, out of a blame of broodmare and uh, blame is becoming a good broodmare sire. And that tells me he should like a distance moving forward. Another horse probably not getting enough attention and, and it's slightly better record than Forte even four or five as well, but she's only a second in a grade one away from being undefeated in five starts. Matt wonder wheel was very good in winning the breeders cup juvenile Phillies. Oh yeah, she certainly was uh, Brian for Mark Cassie owned by DJ Stables, uh, the Green family. Hey, they're my accountants, Brian. So, uh, you know, I like it when those DJ horses uh, uh, do well. But, yeah, the Breeders' Cup won the Alchabiades. That second that you mentioned was in the grade one spin away. Um, DJ, you know, like a lot of Cassie horses, Brian, they, 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 they do well the more that they race. Yeah, and, and she's done little wrong. I'll tell you one thing I was really impressed with. After wired, wiring, going wire to wire in the Alsa B80s, uh, Matt, she came from well off the pace in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies, and that tells me that she's a filly of class. I think there's other fillies out there, and some we're going to talk about on this show, but Wonder Wheel, just like Forte, an obvious choice for a champion two-year-old filly, and uh, the early favorite for the Kentucky Oaks, deservedly so. Matt, we weren't really going to go into foreign horses on this list. These We're, we're homers. We're Americans. Uh, but Modern Games, you know, he, he he's a horse who, you know, we've seen it before. Uh, Goldakova may be the most famous of Europeans that just come over and come over and come over and, and, and look so good on American turf. And Modern Games now is in that realm. Modern Games, of course, was a Breeders' Cup juvenile Turf winner as a two-year-old, uh, uh, an awesome winner of the Woodbine Mile, a grade one up in Canada. And then uh, he won his second straight Breeders' Cup, this time in the mile. He did it again convincingly. He doesn't get a lot of love for his European record, but he's run some really big races over in Europe, so much so that I think he could be the best miler in the world this year. But we expect to see him back here in America next year. Yeah, and fair enough, Brian, to include uh, the European modern games on this list because he's come over two years in a row now. It's not one and done each of those years. Um, as you mentioned, with the win up in Canada in the Woodbine Mile also this year. Um, yeah, uh, no, he hasn't had some of those big uh, Group 1 wins in Europe, but he was second Uh in a couple of those group ones and obviously against very, very tough fields. Um, and it, it's hard not to like and respect modern games from the barn of Charlie Appleby. Yeah. Charlie Appleby, Dubawi, uh, very well, maybe the best sire in the world these days. And modern games is a classic winner in France. He won a, uh, a group one over there, the French, uh, uh Guinea. So, uh, modern games has done it on both sides of the pond, but he looks awesome coming over to America. Matt, we're going to shift gears from Breeders' Cup winners to Breeders' Cups losers. Oh, I hate that word losers, but <laughs> yeah, all these horses ran in the Breeders' Cup. Most of them ran well in the Breeders' Cup, but did not win. Nest was a little disappointing. She was our top pick. She was the favorite in the Breeders' Cup uh, distaff, but she was beaten. That, that stretch run, it, it just didn't seem quite like the same nest we've seen before. Well, and it was a it was an awfully salty field in that Breeders' Cup uh, distaff, which was won by uh, the the great uh, Malathot, um, you know, and 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 Nest uh, 
did plenty of running uh, throughout the summer, going back to when she was second in the Belmont Stakes against the boys, and then uh, racking up some big wins in New York after that, coaching Club American Oaks, Belle Dame, Alabama. Um, terrific, you know, seven wins from 11 starts for Ted, Todd Pletcher, another Curlin, and a lot to look forward to uh, for a 2020, 2023 campaign from Ness. Oh, absolutely, Matt. Uh, she should roll to an Eclipse Award as the three-year-old filly, even though the Breeders' Cup, she ran fourth against the older mares who finished one, two, three, but uh, really terrific season. You mentioned uh, the lack of a break there. She really didn't have a break in, in, in racing or training uh, since debuting last fall. And uh, maybe she needed that. Maybe that showed up just a little bit after a, a, a long year, which included a second against the boys in the Belmont Stakes. Love to see Ness get a mile and a quarter next year because I know she can do it. Excited about her uh, for sure next year, as we are about Taiba. I guess if we're looking at the older males, and that's been depleted for sure, uh, older males of next year, Tegba probably looks like the, uh, the the horse most likely to step into the leading role, Matt. Uh, the son of Gunrunner exploded onto the scene with a win in the Santa Anita Derby and his second career start, a grade one win. That's impressive enough. But after a uh, tough run in his third career race in the Kentucky Derby, it's funny to say, it sounds funny to say it, third career race in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, he came back very good. And, uh, you know, the, the Haskell, he got beat. But uh, the Penn Derby, he didn't. And he was the best of the three-year-olds in the Classic. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, certainly, there will be plenty of races uh, all over the country for uh, Bob Baffert to send uh, T Taba, whether they are staying out in California or going to Oakland Park or... or uh, uh, other places around the country. I hope that we will get to see Taba a little bit more often this year because there's a lot of money to be won in those big races that right now uh, uh, have been depleted a bit by retirements. Yeah, absolutely. And and Taba is uh, still lightly raced. I mean, he there there could be more under the tank. We know how good Gunrunner got in his four-year-old season, Matt. Another Baffert horse on the list. Uh, this was the uh, beaten favorite, the most heavily favorite. Uh, I guess he was under, just under one to two in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile when Forte ran by him in the stretch. One thing I will say about Cave Rock, though, in that Breeders' Cup Juvenile, Matt, we didn't like the way he looked pre-race. He was still able to be second in the Juvenile. Yeah, the, and, and I was thinking the exact same thing, Brian, that we had talked about uh, uh his pre-race problems uh, before the Breeders' Cup and how both of us noticed that as we were watching uh, the horses warm up. I would assume that this is something that, uh, that, that Baffert will key in on, getting him to settle down, and he'll mature um, uh, moving, moving forward. Yeah, Cave Rocks look so good out in California. All that speed, which is always difficult, and and he carries on a legacy, a shortened legacy of Arrogate, uh, who we lost too soon. So Cave Rock is uh, certainly one of the top uh, three-year-olds coming back in 2023. Good to see Clarier is going to come back, Matt. That that record, that you know, this is the, this is the first horse maybe where we see a horse with ten losses in the record. Uh, another daughter of Curlin. Uh, Clarier, you know, she had that one bad race where she banged her head badly before the start of the personal incident. But other than that, she was so good last year, continued a string of good races. And in both Breeders' Cup races, especially this year uh, in the distaff, uh, she could have won. Oh, yeah. And I think that was a great performance, uh, Brian, in the, uh, in the distaff, considering that she was coming off of a layoff, off of that a personal ensign that you mentioned when she banged her head. So, uh, you know, going against the field that she did, third place was a, a a really good performance, something to look to get her looking ahead for the following year. And let's not forget, Brian, that uh, Clarier beat Malathot a couple of times. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If she had uh, nosed her edge in front in the Breeders' Cup distop, Matt, Clarier would 
a champion and not Malathot. It was that close. Throw out the personal runs, and for whatever reason, I think it was the starting gate mishap. Uh, she didn't run a race. But every other race this year was really good for Clarier. It'll be nice to have a really mature Clarier back next year. Clarier and Nest could start their own rivalry. Perhaps my most, uh, my favorite horse in training in American racing, Matt, is the next, the next one on the list. Warlike Goddess, I, 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 I'm hearing that there's a good chance she'll come back next year as a six-year-old. That would be great. I think she still has some unfinished business as good as she's been. Talk about a horse who runs well every single race. It's this long-winded daughter of English Channel. I, I think she's America's best turf horse. And uh, even though she lost last time, I'm uh, pretty confident in saying that. Oh, yeah, that's for sure, Brian. And, and and let's not forget to note that she lost last time. It was a third-place finish, but it was against the boys in the Breeders' Cup turf. And before that, she won the Joe Hurst Turf Classic against the guys also. So Bill Mott certainly has tons of options against other females or against the boys again. As uh, And hopefully... Uh, She's back for a six-year-old campaign because I, too, you know, uh, uh, love her running style, her determination, and, and uh, 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 so much style from Warlike Goddess. Yeah, and it's nice to see a true mile-and-a-half horse here in America as well. Warlike Goddess third in two different Breeders' Cups the last two years. Uh, I'm hoping she wins an Eclipse Award this year, but uh, just like last year, she's in a battle for that, so we'll have to wait and see. All right, Matt. Uh, how about some horses who are far less uh, uh, far less accomplished than the first 10 horses on this list? This, this is a bunch of horses who still have a lot to prove, but how can we not like what we've seen from Loggins so far, Matt? Uh, a huge debut win, and then he gave Forte everything he wanted, maybe getting the worst of it. This son of Ghost Zapper was really, really good in his two starts this year. Absolutely, Brian. Uh, uh, another promising horse and and brad cox has an awful lot of two-year-olds uh, uh sitting in his barn and i think he's going to take his time and uh give loggins a little bit of uh, uh rest over the winter to grow and mature before they get going on the kentucky derby trail certainly one to like he closed at 20 to 1 in the recent Kentucky Derby Future Wager pool. Yeah, Loggins is uh, uh, eagerly re uh, awaited after uh, skipping the Breeders' Cup after such a good race in the Breeders, the Grade 1 Breeders' Futurity with Forte, who of course came back and won the race. Perhaps the horse most talked about after only a debut performance this year, Matt, maybe because it was Breeders' Cup weekend and everybody saw it, maybe because the son of Uncle Mo was such a big purchase price. He's in Bob Baffert's barn. We still got to see what happens with Baffert in the Derby next year, where these horses are transferred if need be. But Arabian Night sure looked the part of a of a, of a coming superstar with that maiden performance, that debut performance at Keeneland. Yeah, all of the above on that, Brian. I agree. And, and the victory by Arabian Night was visually impressive and also earned one of the highest speed figures for two-year-olds um, in in this year. So uh, I would assume that these horses, I don't know, uh, that our Kentucky Derby prospects will transfer to other trainers a little bit earlier on since last year there was so much turmoil going on with court cases and Baffert, et cetera. Um, so we shall see with Arabian Night, but that was a heck of a performance at Keeneland. Yeah, and, and another highly priced uh, uh, big purchase, Matt, was Signator. Uh, Signator uh, West Point Stables is uh, one of the owners on this son of this well bred son of Tappet, and uh, he might be the heir apparent to flight line in that stable at least. Although this one trained by Shug McGahee and I always get excited. I have a soft spot, Matt, for horses I believe are real, true, 10 for all horses. There's less and less of them in America these days, but Signator looks like a horse who will run all day. And you had to like what you saw from his first two races in New York. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, a lot of upside with this uh, son of Tappet because, you know, Tappets don't always show their best as two year olds. 
and, and as a whole certainly mature and get better and better and better. And uh, this this one, as you mentioned, sold for big money, one point seven million dollars. Absolutely, Matt. The next horse on the list is another horse, just like Arabian Night, who's only had one career race. It came at Keeneland, and it was impressive. I was I was happening to watch uh, the the race from Keeneland that day live, and Extra Anejo looked the part. There's Steve Asmussen. We got a Steve, another Steve Asmussen horse on the list. There's Into Mischief, uh, one of America's best sires. Extra Anejo. Uh, it's it's been a, a been more than a month now or so since that debut performance, but it sure impressed me when he debuted at Keeneland. Yeah, an impressive race, a fast race, and they were going seven furlongs. Yeah, and extra extra Anejo I know has been one of the favorites uh, as well, uh, along with Arabian Night horses that are really really well liked after only that debut win. All right, this uh, this unproven commodity list if you will matt uh includes one older horse charge it he's still three about to be four uh remember that movie years ago with madonna desperately seeking susan i've been desperately seeking charge it ever since he ran off the screen in the dwyer stakes i i always thought this horse even early on in his career had tons of talent a son of top a trained by todd fletcher still only five career races still hasn't come back from the dwyer when oh when are we going to see charge it again yeah well here here is another son of tappet and this one certainly is fitting the uh the pattern of needing time and getting better as they get uh as they get older this one is regally bred it's not just tappet but she's out of the super classy uh broodmare i'll take charge yeah that 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 is an excellent female family uh, Charge it looked good early on down in Florida last year. Uh, didn't quite get it done in the Kentucky Derby, but winning the Dwyer by 23 lengths at Belmont Park kind of tipped off that the Derby, much like Taba, uh, wasn't the real Charge It. So uh, he'll be back at some point for Whisper Hill Farm. We're just waiting to find out when. All right, Matt, we got five more on the list. And uh, how about some Phillies, Matt? We've, we've talked more males for sure than we've talked about the female set. We need some more uh, girls on the list. And we're going to start with a champion. There's that sire gun runner again, Steve Asmussen. Echo Zulu was an undefeated champion to your Philly. I, I just feel like she didn't get quite a fair shot to show us what she could do last year or the, i should say this year still 2022 what she could do this year you see the record six of eight lifetime uh, her two losses are hard to uh, give her too much of a hard time for those two defeats yeah and and uh for steve asmussen um echo zulu uh so impressive as a uh as a two-year-old um another one of the phillies mares that we'll see uh how much do they want to keep running and competing as they get older and i sure hope echo zulu we get to see competing a good bit next year i do too matt and uh it, I, I talked to one of her owners recently and he said that she'll be back in the spring they're looking forward to a big year uh, i could see her doing it at one turn or two turns her two losses, she set a tough contested pace in the Kentucky Oaks. Then after a layoff, her second race after a layoff, she came back and ran second. Good night, Olive was a little too good for her down the stretch of the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint. But as as little as she had last year under her belt, I thought that was a very good performance. So let's let's look for good things from the champ at Gozulu next year. Earlier in the show, I mentioned that Wonder Wheel might not be getting as much credit as she deserves. And, and she'll get an Eclipse Award, but honestly, I'm guilty of that, Matt, because I think Hoosier Philly, Hoosier Philly, the daughter of Into Mischief, is actually the best two-year-old Philly I've seen this year and the one I'm most looking forward to next year. Yeah, uh, three for three uh, in in her career thus far. Another uh, offspring from Into Mischief. This one trained by Tom Amos, and I think he was – as excited as you, Brian, or even more so after that impressive victory in the Golden Rod uh, 
recently when uh, after the race in in, uh, in the heat of the moment, uh, Tom Amos started to talk a little bit about the fact that this was the best Philly that he's trained and, and, and he's had some good ones recently and that maybe the Kentucky Derby trail might be an option. He kind of dialed that back a little bit uh, uh, in interviews a couple days afterwards, but all of that is just an indication of how good Tom Amos thinks that uh, Hoosier Philly is. Yeah. And, and in fact, Matt, Amos was doing quite a bit of uh, pumping this filly up even before the golden rod, even, even with her win in the rags to riches, her second career start. Um, he wanted off of, off of only a uh, maiden race at Churchill dance. He really wanted her in the breeders cup juvenile fillies. Uh, she was left just outside looking in. So they ran her in the rags to riches. And that's when Amos said first, first said that, this is a horse unlike any other horse I've ever had, whether it be male or female. And Tom Amos is not a guy to, to talk a lot like that. I, I've known Amos for a while and listened to him for a while, and he's not one to, to just over go overboard with, uh, with the talk about his horses. So who's your filly? All three of her races have been at Churchill Downs. She's done it on a dry track. She's done it on a wet track. If you're looking ahead to the Kentucky Oaks, uh, take note of that Kentucky uh, uh, Churchill Downs record three for three. But uh, I think she's a, a spectacular uh, looking young filly who is full of potential for next year. We might want to say the same thing about the next filly on the list, Matt. Uh, Julia Shining, I, I have a feeling that I'm more on the Hoosier Philly bandwagon and maybe you're more on the Julia Shining bandwagon. Uh, I, I don't know about that. I think they are both ter terrific young uh uh, young fillies, but Julia Shining, two for two. Todd Pletcher, the recent winner of the the, the Demoiselle at uh, Aqueduct. Uh, this one is a full sister to Malathot that we were that we have been talking about. Except this one, Stone Street Stable decided to keep, as opposed to Malathot, who was sold at uh, auction. Two visually impressive late rallying victories. They weren't in fast times. They didn't get big speed figures. But this horse, according to Todd Pletcher, has the look of one that is going to get better and better as she does some growing up. Yeah. And, and forget Malathot just for a second and, and what Malathot accomplished over her three season career. I mean, she's out of a great sire, out of a great uh, race mare. Uh, so her breeding would be special, even if Malathot hadn't come around before her. But a full sister to Malathot, that makes it interesting. I'll tell you what, yeah, you're right. She hasn't run fast yet, but the way she dropped so far back in that Keeneland uh, debut and then just inhaled them and went by them, and then the way she stretched out to nine furlongs in the slop, and and was wide and 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 maybe looking like she wasn't going to get there in the demoiselle and, and and she rolled late to do it that's impressive in its own right so julia shining can be any kind but their looks they're you know full sisters there looks to be something malathot like about her the way she's finishing off her races and closing them out so julia shining certainly a lot of potential there all right, the next two horses on our list, maybe you say, why are they on their list? They don't belong in this list. But hey, Secret Oath, I'll tell you what, after two big stakes wins at uh, uh, minor stakes wins, but they were just dominant at Oakland Park. She ran in seven consecutive grade one races. This filly has not had a break in well over a year. She, she ran 13 times. It just seemed like she was being asked for a little bit too much by her trainer, D. Wayne Lucas, who, who, who may be guilty of doing that over the years, but he's won so much, it's hard to, to argue. Uh, Secret Oath still ran a lot of good races, even when it looked like maybe she wasn't quite the same filly that she was when she beat Nest and Echo Zulu in, the, in, in a 14-horse Kentucky Oaks field. Seven straight grade one races, she tried every time. And I tell you what, the Breeders' Cup just out there was just a second there, Matt, where I thought, whoa, Secret Oath could win this the way she showed that burst of speed and 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 took over the lead at the head of the stretch. 
she faded as she did kind of throughout the season. But I want to see Secret Oath come back after a little bit of a layoff. Yeah, I certainly do also uh, because when Secret Oath was good, she was really, really good. And, and yeah, it, it is so important to note what she said all of these races, she was running in grade ones against top horses. And, and yeah, she, her form certainly went off a little bit towards the end of this campaign. Let her have some win, uh, winter off. Let her uh, eat some grass out on the farm and uh, mature. And I'm really interested to see which secret oath shows up next year. Yeah, and I'll reiterate it one more time. Even though she was not as good later in the season, running against Nest, running in the Preakness, running in the Breeders' Cup this off, she was still competitive against the very best. So if she can improve again after the layoff as a four-year-old, a daughter of Arrogate, look out. Last horse on the list, Matt, the funded, maybe the least accomplished older horse on the list, but... This horse showed some flashes early in his career, and his last two races make me think he could be the new king of California. Yeah, last two uh, races, nice victories for the four-year-old Bob Baffert trainee in the Native Diver and the Awesome again. Um, and hey, no doubt, there's a huge void to be filled with the retirement of Flightline and uh, a lot of other of the usual older male horses that we saw competing in the big races out in California defunded looks like one that can step in and fill a little bit of a vo of that void left by flight line. Yeah. Fill a void. Uh, not a lot of dials in we talk about uh, in, in the biggest races, but defunded beat a very good field. He was best in the grade one. Awesome. Again, and then he came back and battled on the lead in the native diver and just dominated a weaker field, but uh, certainly defunded. Looks like he's ready to do big things in 2023. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed that show. 20 horses we're looking forward to seeing come back in 2023. It's They're not all retiring, Matt, so that's good news. Uh, let me get a parting shot from you, my friend, before we uh, call it a show here on Horse Sign. Yeah, 20 interesting horses. Uh, so a lot to look forward to in 2023. Uh, you know, we got the Pegasus World Cup coming up uh, in coming up next month, I guess. And I don't know, maybe we'll see some of these horses uh, in there. We shall see. But as always, um, stay with us, Horse Center fans. We'll be here. And as always, thanks for watching the show. Yeah, thank you for watching the show. If you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation, go ahead and do that for us now. Thanks to our sponsor. Uh, Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. Thanks to you, Matt, for being with me every week. Folks, we'll be back with another big show next week right here on Horse Center. We will see you then.